Good e afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to this meeting of the Norfolk Select Board. My name is Kevin Calcutt. I'm joined by my fellow board members, Chris Weeder and C.C. Van Tyne, as well as our town administrator, Blythe Robinson. We have but one item on our agenda this afternoon, and that is to consider the execution of a contract with Fire Chief Aaron Kinney. Blythe, would you like to give us any background or intro into this item? Sure. So um, the board um, acted on this at the meeting on August, I say August, September 24th, and um, town HR Director Scott Bright and I started the negotiations after that. Uh, um, and our goal was to um, bring on the new chief uh, within the range that we had um, advertised for the position, which was $130,000 to $160,000. Uh, and I am happy to report that we have come in with that in, in that range. And this contract is one that was re rewritten largely when I came on board in terms of the basic outline of it, but obviously it's been customized to the chief. I thought it was important just to help the board understand what the, the um, dollar items are that make up this contract and how it relates to the chief who was just here. Um, and overall, the total value of the financial package here is $151,000 for Mr. Kinney, and it's uh, overall $1,000 more than we were paying Chief um, Bushnell. Um, the change, the real differences here are that uh, Mr. Kinney would have a, a salary that's slightly higher than former chief and receive a stipend for having a paramedic license that he holds. Um, but what he's not receiving that was received by the previous chief was the town had purchased a life insurance policy on his behalf and contributed to his deferred compensation. So those are not part of this um, package. And um, the uniform allowance and ability to receive payment for holidays is the same. Uh, vacations also less than the previous chief. So that's overall um, what we have negotiated. And he has prospectively has signed the contract and is prepared to start on December 2nd, which tracks appropriately with the 60 days of notice that he needs to give to um, the town of Sherborne, which I believe he's already given. So that's where we stand. And um, it's town council's opinion that uh, the board needs to execute the contract. Very good, thank you. Chris, questions, comments, concerns? Yeah. Um, I guess the first question is the EMT paramedic stipend, is that an annual stipend? It is. That's, uh, it's a part of the contract for the new contract that the uh, town signed with the union earlier this year. And so he's basically receiving what the staff also receives there. But he's not in the union? He's not in the union. Okay. So we're not obligated to provide this, but as a, as a method of reaching an overall settlement, um, we agreed to do that. Okay. And um, I guess educate me a little bit on the holiday pay. It says that the chief gets the holiday pay if, he, um, if he's working on duty on a holiday. I'm going to so, turn to Scott so, for that. And, but it's, so, and it says he is on duty. So if the fire chief is on vacation the week of a holiday, does he get the extra day pay per this policy? Yeah, so uh, this is part of a Massachusetts state law right. for fire chiefs and police chiefs. So right. if they're on duty any part of the day on one of nine holidays that are listed in the law, they get essentially double pay. Right. It's in the law. Right. So if he was uh, on a cruise in the Bahamas, uh, he wouldn't get it, no. He wouldn't get it. So Correct. if he's on vacation, he doesn't get it. Correct. So we've included it in the total package, but he may not get it completely. Yeah. For, is that correct. right? I, I guess that's possible. Well, how right? do you monitor that? Well, well, we know he's put in for a vacation to go to, say, the Bahamas, and he's okay. physically out of town, then we would say that that wouldn't be eligible. But, you know, there may be, if he answers a call, whether he comes to the office or he doesn't on a holiday, directs some staff from... Well, if he calls him from the Bahamas, I don't know if I'm going to pay him. I <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, if I don't know if I'm willing to. Okay. Doesn't mean he has to physically right. be present in yeah. the building. He may, okay. in some other way, work. Okay. 
On that note, in section six, you have to correct it because you cite MGL chapter 147, section 17F, which is the police chief. Okay. You want to you want to cite the um, the fire chiefs, which is actually you have it in your breakdown is um, section. Section 5070 of Chapter 48. So you want to correct that in the contract. 57E. 57E, Chapter 48, is for the fire chief. Okay. Um, you. you know, um, and also, what I, I also think we should see in these, which isn't in this, is the car allowance. I realize we give a car, we give a car but a car is worth $10,000 a year. So when I add a car into this, I've now got a total package of $161,000 because a car is a value. He, the, the contract clearly calls out that he gets a car for 100% of the time, use other, except for if he leaves the state. So to me, that's a value. So when we say we negotiated within the 130 and the 160, I say we really negotiated a $161,000 contract. And, and I'm surprised because uh, you know last week we decided we couldn't afford electronic speed signs and uh, the contract I mean I negotiate a lot of contracts at a lot of salaries and when I put a 130 to 160 I usually try to get closer to the lower end of the scale when someone starts well not at the higher end of the scale to be to be brutally honest we had offered a lower salary and the town is working for met our offer so the what the town he was working for met our offer okay so we had the choice of either continuing to negotiate with him and offer something slightly better than we had first put on the table in order to get him to work here or to choose another candidate. But he actually wanted to come here from that other department. He did, but if he So if they were matching his willing, salary, he I don't think to be that willing to stay there for the higher offer they made him than what we put on the table. We put a lower offer on the table. Mm -hmm. Did we get a written copy of that offer? You what? No, did you get it from what he got from Sherborne? No. So we don't know if that's true. We just, it's hearsay. I just think, I just think when you got to look at the value of the vehicle and you got to put that the into your. The vehicle we already own. We've owned, it's, we own two of them. It's, it's, it's gas, it's maintenance. It's, we, we offered it's a, the it's a vehicle. Chief. We it's offered a vehicle. to the previous chief. That's all right. We, this is not a comparison to the previous chief because I don't think any of us negotiated the previous chief's contract. We're negotiating this contract. So I think you got to look at that. I think it's very important. It's a value. You get a vehicle, we give you a vehicle, it's part of your package. When we put this together, we were focused on dollars being paid to each person. I didn't add it in. You're right, it's either, it's either 150 and 151 or 160 and 161. Right. You put a value of 10,000 on In theory, actually, if you look at it, and it's in both contracts, the $5,000 really should be in their base contract. And the $10,000 should be in his base contract because you're giving it to him every year. So you've broken out the pieces, but in theory, it's 135 plus 10. It's 145 plus the $5,000 holiday pay. It's $150,000 base pay plus a vehicle. It's really what it is. But the increase is said. based on the 135. Hmm? He's getting, when he gets a two or a three or whatever percent increase we give, it's going to be on a lower amount than the whole It's going to be on the 135, but he still gets $10,000 a year for a paramedic stipend, which he can't, he's not going to be a paramedic. He's not going to be performing that. He may be. Well, no, he's the chief. He, he has all these union workers. He, hmm? He's a working chief. He's still, he's the chief. We have plenty of paramedics out there in the field. I just don't know why we, we, we gave away, we gave everything. I don't look at this. I don't, I'm just saying I don't, you asked me to speak. Well, then you don't have to sign I just it, said, Mr. I just don't look and for, we can look I, for another candidate. Relax. I just said I don't believe this negotiation was, it was, high, we paid $160,000. So the negotiation, as far as, I, my, my world of negotiating, I usually try to get it for less than the top end. I did. Okay. But we don't know that because we never got a written comparison. I think it's fair to say that. And I also would have liked. I also would have liked to have seen comparisons. I don't know what Plainville rent them. We can get that to you. We have. Well, a it's, I would like to. I would have liked to have seen it on the comparison here, because not just Coles. I would have liked to see the neighboring towns. Well, then is I wish you would let me know several yeah. days well, ago when you received it, this. It, it is, but you have to go. It, it might be the same as his. They may show the base salary, but not show all oh, the okay. stipends. So right. yeah. We send this information in advance in hopes that if you have questions, you let us know so we can provide to you. We can walk upstairs and get it as soon as the meeting's over. We just thought this would be satisfactory. 
Well, because they, you asked for our concerns, and these are my concerns. I think I don't think have I asked you anything that's illegitimate. I mean, we, these are uh, I negotiate contracts too, and I and I, and I, and, I you know, like I said, I, I just have to you know I read it and I look at it and I say hmm. Okay. It's at the high end. And I, I think he's going to make a wonderful chief. I think he's going to be great. But I'm also looking out. I think our responsibility, our number one responsibility, is the fiscal responsibility of this town. And so, therefore, and when exactly I when I can't hear about hi, when I can't get electronic signs for speeds and things like that, I, I don't understand. And I guess the ten thousand dollar paramedic stipend is that what made the difference? We yes, in part because the town of Norfolk pays far less for health insurance than. The t other counties working for it, other things that we needed to make some adjustments, and we didn't want to do it to base pay because that is a multiplier, you know, year over year that ends up being higher. We elected to, to offer it in a different place that's a fixed amount. Okay. Fixed amounts are better than things that go up by percentages. Of course. It's the long term is, for the town. And is the good cause, is that an MGL requirement when they said you're uh, terminating someone for good cause, or do we put that in? Is that something spelled out in? No requirement. I mean, I, ju I just find it inconsistent when somebody can give us 60 day notice and leave. And if we want to terminate somebody, we've got to do it for good cause, which we know requires a hearing, lawyers, all that. I just think it's it's inconsistent to me. Do you want to be able to fire him for no cause? I, I, if he's a tenant, if he's an employee at will, yes. I want, to, I want to do it as if uh, it's the same reason he can leave me in 60 days well, for no cause. That's probably why state law provides for contracts for school superintendents, police chiefs, fire chiefs, and town administrators so that they have some protection under the law that otherwise a assessor, a finance director, a planning director doesn't have. Yeah. Well, that's why I asked. So, is an NGO so requirement we'll is something we do? Is it something that we, is that part of our negotiation strategies that we use in the town? I don't know. I'm just asking. Well, I, I don't know any fire chief or police chief who would come without a contract, and frankly, this is what's going to be expected I think if you looked at 25 contracts you'd find 25 copies that had for any chief that would have that as a, as a minimum standard okay I don't think anyone would sign it without it okay just a question and also this is a strong chief he, he, he's a, as you may have read the law yes. once they are the they, they they are responsible for the department once they are in place Yeah, and just we may want to clamp the language on the automobile because it talks about being used to performance of special duties and doing his duties. Then it says it may be used by a chief at all times as fire chief. Well, so the fire chief goes out to dinner in um, Plainville, and there's a fire that happens in in, in Norfolk. Norfolk. They want to, you know, they're going to get in the car and they're going to drive back. They, no, I'm they, just saying it says that in connection with performance of his duties, and it says in this following next sense, it may be used at all times. And I think so it's, it it's a matter of, of, of a conversation with, between myself and the chief about using it judiciously. Yes. There's choices when to take the family car and there's choices of when to take the town car. Well, he almost has to take the town car because he doesn't know when there's going to be a fire. So he's sort of yeah, a, well, that's he's in a particular, unless he's eating if you're going, If here. you're going to um, see a play, you're going to Tanglewood, you might take the town, your, your personal car, as an example. I actually think those two sentences, just to chime in for a second, um, are not um, in contradiction to one another because I read said vehicle is to be used by the chief in connection with the performances of his duties as an admonition not to roll up to a fire in a Subaru. And the next sentence says it may be used by the chief at all times as the chief is on call 24-7. However, the vehicle shall only be used within Massachusetts to be an acknowledgement that if he, you know, if he's at somewhere else and there's a fire, you know, that he really is on call, right? They're two separate, just sort of observationally. One sentence has to do with the fact that they expect, we expect the chief to use the chief truck to go to a fire. And we, um, the second one is acknowledgement that because we expect that he may use his vehicle at all times because he is basically on call 24 seven, right? They're just, that's how I read them. Yeah. I, think I do a couple of contracts to, too. I, I hate to, yeah, I hate for someone to take them in, in contradiction. Is that you know? Wait a minute, because it says two, th two very, very different things in a way. 
It's very okay. two very different. Well, I mean, like I said, I do contact. I have no problem with it. He does regularly as well. I'm he sure does about uh, the same amount. I believe he does have to have a vehicle. We provide one to the police chief as well. But I do again, like. I, I do want to. I do think we have to start considering this part of someone's compensation. It is compensation. To that end, it's it's not a bad idea to maybe. I mean, I know you sort of estimated ten thousand a year. It maybe for future reference. Obviously, I think the ship has sailed for this one, but it may not be a bad idea to figure out, all right, what is the value add, right? Like in, in my world, people receive car um, allowances as part of their package, mm -hmm. and they invariably don't put it on their financial statement, right? They're like, oh, I only make $150,000. And you're like, well, but you have a car. What's the value of that? And it really just depends on things like the amount of maintenance, what they would ordinarily have to spend for a light car, like this is a car that we already, right? I mean, you have all of these factors that go into it and then it spits out a number. Is that number 10,000? Could be, but whatever the it is, maybe we come up with a, we look at this. The government says it's 58 cents a mile times 16,000 miles a year. So, so that's, so then that's probably so maybe not a taxable amount though for hmm? this particular job. No, but, no, but maybe that's um, how you, what you use. All I'm saying is it's right. a benefit. It's, it's a part table. of your package. Sure. What I'm trying to okay. say is maybe it's not, it's not your package includes okay. a vehicle. What I'm trying to say is Mine right? is not. I'm okay. just going to finish. I'm going to keep saying it over and over until I actually get to finish what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is in the future might not be a bad idea to come up with a figure and acknowledge, you know, and maybe it's different for different jobs or different vehicles and whatever it is, have that as, you know, sort of acknowledged so that everybody, when they're negotiating, people can feel comfortable knowing, all right, when I'm looking at this, I know nobody feels like somebody's trying to slide something by or, right, it's your package includes a 10 grand auto allowance. Unfortunately, in this instance, you get to drive what we tell you type of type of thing, right? Just to come up with a, an actual figure. To build the components of each individual contributing Correct. factor into what the total compensation, compensation, compensation you can say that package again. comes out to be. Correct. I, yeah, that makes sense. And the only other thing I had was Section 8 says town administrator may review and evaluate Kenny at least once annually. Um, to me, is we sh everybody should be reviewed. Mm -hmm. So maybe instead of may, shall review? I think it means that I can do it more often. I, sh I may, do, you know, I may do it more than that if I choose to. At least once. You yep, say yep. at least once. At annually. least once. So that means I could can't be, do it more. Could be more than once. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But we kind of have a little bit of a role in directing the town administrator. If I, if we felt, or if you feel, that there needs to be quarterly audits. I don't know why, but right. I mean, yeah. biannual, whatever whatever periodic amount, we could certainly yeah. say. Yep. No, if you like May, I, either one works. But I just thought May was, you may not decide to do it once annually. Whereas shall is you will do it once okay. annually. That's so that's, that's my concern is because you, because shall at least once annually means you could do it more than once annually as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Right? Mm -hmm. So I guess I like the word shall instead of May because we know that we want to make sure people are starting to get reviews here in town, which hasn't happened in a long time. I understand. Okay. And that's all I have for questions. That's it. That's it. <laughs> all pretty good points from my perspective. Um, the one thing I would say is I do know that in the negotiation process, we did come in at a certain figure. Uh, he took that figure, thought about it. Uh, there was an executive session posted for the town of Sherborne to go over something and after that is when we got the counter off or they made him a counter offer and we learned about it so i do believe that all that taken into account the correct steps were followed to be able to ensure that we got the candidate that we all agreed that we wanted um if you look at the comparison between the previous chief the automobile whether it be ten thousand or a hundred thousand was the same thing that was in there for cole's compensation compensation package as well so between Actually, this is better the two, what do you mean for us because he cole could go out of state Oh. Which is why we had to get the second car. Okay. Well, Cold. Related, if not the same. Um, so I do think that the two packages are comparable to each other. So I don't think we really went too far in overextending to be able to get the right guy into the job. But I do think that we got the right guy, and I think that's the most important part. Uh, Cece, did you have any questions, comments, or concerns? I just, because for whatever reason, we all have things that we ping on that, that make us a little bananas. And for me, that thing had been the fact that that the, the prior chief could take that car and commute multiple times a week back and forth down 95 to Connecticut and New York, 
which resulted in needing to get a brand new big honk and expensive vehicle more quickly than you would ordinarily and that made me as bananas mm -hmm. and so I appreciate the fact that people heard me whining about that with fairly regularity <laughs> and nobody consulted me and yet it's in here so I was very <laughs> like immediately I'm like oh yeah okay yeah that's fine <laughs> so I mean it's the little things I get it um, I certainly understand negotiating I appreciate what Chris is saying about the fact that we say we have a floor of 135 and a ceiling of 160 and we went out and with our Cracker Jack negotiating skills and negotiated 161, right? I get that that is sort of how it feels, but I get that it's also not, not how it happened, right? It's not like we made, we went out and our first offer was over what our ceiling was. And, um, but I really think he's a great fit. I'm really excited. I get that it's kind of, I think Chris made some great points for future contractual negotiations in terms of monetizing some of this more clearly. I mean, I'm sure that the, that the applicant I mean, that was our knows attempt. No, I know. I'm sure the applicant knows what it's worth, but I think that for people who are sort of reviewing it or when it's being presented to them, then, you know, that, that it's really 161, not 151. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm tickled pink. So this is a, a fairly standard con contract we're working with now, so we do take note of your concerns here. And um, I know um, that Scott has the background of what other chiefs are being paid in Norfolk County, so we can, we can share that with you. I always want to have the happiest employee I can have for the lowest price. That just didn't work for us in this situation because the other town was willing to, wanted to keep him and tried to make that possible. That worked against us in this case. The flip side, or as an, as, as an aside, um, it's always nice when you're doing hiring to have that happen. And you can't always, right, the, uh, oftentimes in my line of work, you go to hire someone and the people that you go to hire, they get kept, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and so it doesn't always work. But it's certainly a nice, like if they had been like, okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Like, right. Wait a like, minute. <laughs> Maybe we picked the wrong guy, but the fact that they went and had an executive session um, and came back with a higher amount of money is certainly a testament to who we got. I think so. Absolutely. If you just get a microphone, you're more than welcome. You can even come up here if you'd like. If you don't want to wait for one. Oh, Katie's got one. I guess listen to, to the discussion. The question I have is really from the town perspective. How, how is this covered from a liability perspective? If he's out and he and his wife go into town and he's driving the town car and, and has an accident or kills somebody, I mean, where's the liability to the town? How does that get covered or addressed when someone's driving a town-owned vehicle on personal business? So I'm going to qualify my answer by saying that feel free to tell me I'm wrong or to double check with town council. But my recollection from, from many years of reading Lawyers Weekly from bar, from logs, law school, from the bar review, from everything, is that if you're on personal business, as long as you're not doing town business, so like if he's leaving, coming back from the theater, and there's a fire and he's on his way to the fire and he's not driving safely and he gets in an accident, then we're liable. If he's just out and about with his wife um, and isn't paying attention, drops something, gets into an accident, we're not, is my understanding. Like if You're not if, liable? Even though he's in a co company car. As long as he's not doing company business is my recollection. But we yeah, don't I, really I, want the, the town council to tell me, but that's my recollection is that he needs to be doing town business. I, I wouldn't disagree with that. If, if a lawsuit ensued, you know, it's going to be well known, understood that the car is owned by the town and probably we would be named as well, but we have insurance and that would help resolve that, you know, if there's litigation ensuing, that would help us resolve that. Uh, yeah, I'm a resident also. My name's Paul Denver. I live at the village at River's Edge, as does Mr. Haddad. Um, and, and I'm a lawyer also, did a lot of personal injury work in my career. Um, so you have, a, you have an insurance policy for the town that would cover the vehicle. Uh, clearly, if, if he's in, on town business, uh, there'd be no question about that. But I, I do think somebody should probably look at that policy and, and just uh, make sure there, there should actually, I think, be coverage for uh, at all times for, for in this situation. I mean, you're, you're asking this gentleman, to, and I think there is, 
uh, I, I think it would be very difficult for the insurance company to begin to parse this out. Um, that makes sense. Um, you know, the, the comments you made, uh, 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 select woman, about, about <laughs> the going and coming. Okay. Uh, a little less wordy. <laughs> okay. No, um, I, I, you know, I, I th it sounded as if you were thinking of the workers' compensation situation where the coming and going and, and all and that. And that can be hard is, as well. Is, is not necessarily covered. But, but in any event, I think, I think you probably have coverage. And by the way, if he has another car, he almost certainly has a substantial amount of coverage there. That covers him in other vehicles right. in the event of a. Oh, is that right? So if he's driving any other fire vehicle, chief your car? vehicle or whatever, oh, as okay. long as it's not, you know, if somebody says, look, you're not on town business, so our town policy is going to exclude you, well, then he can look to his own insurer. Right. And he, I, he should certainly I have a substantial amount. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, that's just my view of it. But. See, it was handy dandy having someone who actually knew what they were talking about. I have a question about can the, can the vehicle you're talking about. Is, it, is this the same vehicle that the fire chief uses to show up if, at fires? It, it's a marked vehicle? It says, it's not marked. It's, not it's, marked. Not it's, marked. it's, it's okay. a Ford Expedition, I yeah. think. Okay. It's, it's the We've big had black it for Ford a few Expedition years. with the blue plate that you see going yeah. around. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is there a reason we don't mark it? Uh, it's dealt. <laughs> it is the fire chief. You want people to know he's yeah. there? I, uh, For most commercial music that, vehicles don't that was an uh, agreement with the previous chief. Oh, because he was oh. So should it be marked? It could be. We can certainly look. Well, we them. mark all our other vehicles. I would think we should mark our. Well, it's got our the only one that's not marked is, is, is Chief Stone's, plate. and that, that car gets used sometimes for unmarked purposes. So. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. But it's got fire plates and it's got wig wax and wig Yes, wag. it does. So, so, yeah, it might be nice to have a little, I don't know find out what it costs, right? It's not but expensive. You want it's not expensive. Nice no. little gold. Yeah. Not sure what the fire chief would need the element of surprise for. That's right. I don't know that he needs no. to sneak up on the fire. Okay. I, I think, think he just wants in. to come in yeah. with all everything <laughs> it would make going. Sense. I mean, he is the fire chief. I can tell you the, the new chief's current truck is extremely well marked. So uh, I, I don't think that would be an issue with him. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention about the insurance is, is uh, no matter where he's driving, this is his driver's license. So if he's doing something improper, immoral, illegal, whatever, while he's driving our vehicle and he has a problem with you know, something, they'll, they'll attach his driver's license. So it's not a town driver's license. So just wanted to. Have we thought about GPSs for our commercial or town vehicles? I I, real, I, I know that uh, DPW recently had a conversation with Verizon about that. They have a program where they can offer that te technology. I don't know that we have made any plans to do that, do so yet. Maybe some we want to look into in the future. For I, I know there's been a ex conversation. I can't en enunciate the details. No, not details. just DPW. I just think because we could, uh, it works well with the, uh, the green initiative because we can see what vehicles are, you know, if the fire chief's vehicle gets 11 miles to a gallon, we might want to look and say, geez, this is not conducive to our green community, maybe we want to trade in that vehicle and go get one that's more energy efficient. Hmm? Prius. Put him in, fold him into a Prius. So not only does it, not only does <laughs> it let us know where everybody's going, it actually provides us with a lot of other information that um, helps you with your green initiative and with your vehicles. It may be something to look at. You know what else is cool? Because now we're just going to go absolutely take a hard left just for fun. We're here. Uh, <laughs> Dwight's like, no. You know they have it, the insurance companies now have this doodad that you can put in your car and it can tell if you're, you're being a good driver and you get good driver points and stuff. Or where your kids are at. Right, or where, <laughs> right, like there's all sorts of things that can tell if you're speeding and all this stuff. Future reference, back pocket item, but like to your point about liability, and not just about the fire chief, but if we have cars for every, like it seems like every, every town, a lot of town employees have, we have recreation vehicles, right? Like everyone's got a car. You know, maybe in the future. These GPSs do that. They actually have Is that right? smart That's GPSs, cool. so they actually tell you when you how many times you've gone over the speed limit. <coughs> they give you invocations. I don't as want to that in breaking. my car, right. but so I think for other people's <laughs> car, it's a great idea. Because it I never speed. As long as it's legal. Scott, go ahead. Sorry. So uh, just uh, as an FY, in the latest police contract, uh, there is language to have GPS. Uh, is negotiable with the unions, but in that contract, it is in place. Uh, if we purchase new radios, the GPS is part of the radio system in case a police officer is out of his car and needs to be located. So, oh, but that th but but that is uh, that is part of the the new car. And Scott m brings up a good point. We likely would need to negotiate negotiate with each of the unions. So, maybe it's an item when Reputation contracts come. <laughs> well, obviously, some employees are non-union, but it, specifically to DPW, 
and I guess to a certain extent fire yeah. would need to yep. do that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. This is a, a, a conversation about the salary. Is, th is there a benchmark or like, like what are the top five salaries in the fire department just to see how the chief r rates to, I guess, the four people below him? I mean, do, is there that comparison that is available? We certainly can get Just that to, to you. I'm not sure we have it off the top of, of our heads. Or rea our realistic point of view? I don't know if Scott knows them off the top of his head, or we can get that to you later. Okay. But if the question is if we take that into account when establishing the rates, yes, that's definitely a consideration. Yeah, I guess that's pos part of it because it, I mean, like anything else, even in, in regular businesses, you always look at something like that, how you relate to, especially people that are below you, never right. mind people above you, you mm -hmm. know, just from a satisfaction perspective and a motivation perspective. I mean, that's a very important issue. So I was just wondering if that was part of the consideration. It's part of the consideration, but also the other positions in the, in the department are all in the union and, and governed by a union contract. So the answer is yet, yes and no. I mean, uh, one of the things I'd like to see happen going forward is a, uh, the town to update its whole pay and classification plan so it is, is current and reflects current job descriptions and com competitiveness with our, our uh, like communities and hopefully make sure that we're on track with what, what you're suggesting. And I would say that the blue ink over Mr. Kinney's name here would identify that he's pretty satisfied with what we've presented to him in this package. I like his signature. As he should be. As he should be. With that being said, are we ready to entertain a motion? Yep. Are you going to move? Sure. Um, I would move that the board vote to execute a contract with Fire Chief Aaron Kinney. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 This is just to now, now we vote, right? Because that seems to be the way the way it's. Move that the board vote to execute. Oh, no, I guess I say I. I. Yeah. I said I first. Okay, and good. I was wondering if we needed to do <laughs> something else. No? Nope. So we have ourselves a contract. Thank you very much. Do we need to sign? Yes, I will pass them down. All right. Well, with our singular agenda item satisfied for the afternoon, I don't believe we have anything else. Uh, no. Anything you'd like to awesome. mention before jumping off today? Chris? All set. Cece? Nope. Blythe? Nope. All right. And that Can we raise any uh, uh, questions? I, I just have a, a few questions about various timing and, and how things work in terms of town meetings specifically. Um, is it something that we could? Sure. Go right ahead. So here, my, one of my issues is, no, um, you know, and, and I apologize if this is, uh, if these we questions are stupid because they haven't been, been around. No such right. thing. Go right ahead. Um, town meetings November 19th. Mm -hmm. When is the warrant available for review as opposed to when is it mailed is it, and is it on web, the website? So in the selectman's packet that will be online uh, late this week, there will be a listing of all of the possible articles. It isn't meant to be the final list. It, the warrant closes uh, on Thursday, this Thursday afternoon at 6 o'clock. The, the board will get a list of all the possible articles that we're aware of and some background about them. Uh, and then we'll spend the month of Thank October you. finalizing the order, finalizing what will be on the warrant, and so the board can right. execute the warrant on October 29th. An actual copy of the warrant, will, a draft, should be available for the meeting of October 15th. Uh, they do. They're currently working on trying to have a meeting either October 7th or 8th. You'll find, you'll find that on the website once it's finally posted. Um, and, I, and I will have the, the, a similar conversation with them that night about what we believe would be on the warrant or what we are working on, whether it's a, uh, a capital item or a, um, a zoning issue, you know, ch change in a general bylaw or so on.
need much of a perspective from people who are in our company, regardless of anything, um, for a discussion about what happened to police and fire stations. Uh, why, why the trust has developed and uh, how much uh, are the funds going to cost us? Uh, what's the plan going forward to address some of those problems, but the more general problem of, of, of difficulties with building uh, Ms. Robinson discussed uh, briefly with Ed and myself uh, a, a couple of issues that I'll just throw this question in an executive session. I, I understand the, the potential litigation issues and, and whatever, but um, we did raise the, our, the issue in the May town meeting. We were told that a meeting would be scheduled to discuss just this issue, uh, and it hasn't been uh, set up. I, I think no matter what the litigation issues, there are ways around. I would really like to see a discussion of that before town meeting, um, and I will. I'm going to raise the issue of town meeting again. I think it's a it's an issue that should be discussed in the context of the finances of the town. It's it's front and center uh, in, in the, the finances, uh, and, uh, and the, the residents of, of this town, particularly after some very substantial tax increases over the last year, need to understand what's going on. More important than that, even, how is this going to be prevented in the future? I come from Needham, where we had a public uh, building committee that we, after a disaster that we had in one of our schools, and that committee has functioned for the last 25 years and done a tremendous job. Uh, they're independent citizens with all kinds of abilities, lawyers, uh, CPAs, uh, insurance experts, etc. Uh, I would strongly recommend that the standing committee standing committee of that type be established. Uh, you'll get plenty of volunteers, I think. Ms. Robinson mentioned that there had been such a committee that was disbanded at some point. I don't know any of the issues are not really relevant, perhaps, I don't know. Um, but um, uh, I think you need people who understand construction, understand all aspects of it, including litigation and, and, and many other areas. Um, and uh, that possibly, uh, the existence of such a committee possibly of these problems anyway. But I think the town needs that. Um, and um, okay, that's all I have to say. Well, I think I'll just say that uh, I don't think you'll find a single person up here who disagrees with you. Uh, I think everybody is looking for the best path to be able to execute something like that. And we're currently waiting on some follow up items from our town council to give us that path. Okay. So we're working on that right now. And we wholeheartedly understand the urgency. Thanks. Thank you. If there's nothing else, I would move that we adjourn for this meeting. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much.